right, let's get started. So um, thank you for joining me today, everyone. We are starting our rollout of our business plan training. We will be hosting this every Wednesday at 11 a.m. except for our team meeting Wednesday. We skipped that one through the month of October. So that gives us four weeks of business planning that we will be covering. Um, if you're like, Amy, why in the world are we talking about a business plan in October? It's barely the beginning of the third quarter. Well, that is exactly why we are talking about our business plan, because it is the beginning of the third quarter. And um, we want to make sure that we have our business plan in place by the end of October so that that will set us up in 2025 to not just hit our goals, but to exceed our goals. If we wait and do our business plan at the end, December, November of this year, we don't start actually enacting our business plan. We kind of get lazy towards the end of the year. Um, we stopped working. We don't have a plan. And then what happens is we hit January and we're still not going to have any closings in January because it's going to take us, you know, even if we had a buyer in January, we're probably not closing until February at that point. So we're going to be behind on closings going into the year. So if we start planning now, we start doing the actions that we will put our plan around um, here in the next few weeks, then that's going to lead to our success and put you in a position where you're hitting the ground running in 2025 to meet and exceed those goals, okay? In addition to um, not only hitting the ground running and putting together the business plan, but I'm gonna challenge you um, to kind of a new way of thinking if you've never heard it, uh, heard it. We're gonna talk about our business plan in terms of the 12 week year, okay? I think it's a, stellar way to plan our business and plan our future with that um there's two books that go along with that so there's the 12 week year let's see if i can get it close enough to my face that it'll focus field guide so it's just a paper field guide with like actually like you write in it yeah, and, got yeah, those out. Stuff. and she knows that this is an issue because she does this area uh, a lot, right? so you've got that and then there's also a full book on the 12 week year. So if you like what you're seeing here, you want to dive deeper into it. I'd recognize, I would uh, recommend those two things. I actually have the 12 week year on Audible and then I got the field guide in person. So anyways, there you go. But let's get started. Today, we're going to chunk it up into four different sessions, as I already mentioned. So today, I'm just trying to get my thing to catch up with me. Um, we are going to cover what the 12 week year is. We're going to talk about the three principles and the five disciplines of the 12 week year. And then we're going to dive into defining your values and creating vision. Okay. That's all we're going to do this week. Um, I say that's all, it's a lot of information to cover. Um, Leticia, I got them off Amazon. So you can order those books off Amazon. You can head down to a local bookstore. Um, they should all have those books. Okay. So um, this is what we're covering today. Um, are we all ready? Anybody have any questions before we get started? I do have the chat box open. I do have you guys open so you can raise your little zoomy hand if you have questions. Don't go on, I've got a quarter's resolution. So let's just say that you've never like put together a business plan before. And let's say you've done a new year's resolution, right? So you start out strong those first like few weeks in January, maybe you make it into February. And then we kind of fade in the middle. They don't become as important only to realize near the end, right? As we're coming into this third quarter, November, December, that you're behind and you work really hard to try to get caught up. And a lot of times for the time we're trying to get caught up at the end, it's already too late, right? I know I'm guilty of doing this prior years. Anybody else do this? Okay, I'm gonna assume you're all admitting to it but we'll just pretend, right? It's kind of like this Black Friday mentality, right? That's what we call the Friday after Thanksgiving. And it's called that because the stores are okay at running at a loss throughout the year because they know that they are gonna make up that lost revenue at the end of the year, okay? But let me ask you this. When it comes to your income, do you want all of your income in December? Or do you, bill, do you have bills that need to be paid each and every single month throughout the year, right? Throw it in the chat box. Do you have bills that only are due in December or are they due all year? 
All right. So let's stop thinking of our year as 12 months and we're going to start chunking it into it only being 12 weeks. Okay. By doing this, what it's going to do is it's going to prove, it's been proven to drive execution and drive results. So we're not going to say, oh, well, in 2025, I need to make $200,000. We're going to say $240,000 just to make it easy. And then I'm going to divide that by 12, which is 20,000 per month. And then I'm going to multiply it by three for approximately 12 weeks. So I need to make $60,000 in the next 12 weeks. No, that's not how we're going to look at things. Okay. We're just going to look at, hey, in the next 12 weeks, where do we need to be? How many closings do we need to have? What activities do we need to complete? Where do we need to be in the next 12 weeks? Because you might be like, oh, well, if I took my annual goal and I divided it by 12 and then multiplied it by three to get a 12 week goal. And then I realized that I'm taking the entire month of February off because I'm going to Europe and backtracking across Europe for a month. Then you realize that wasn't a realistic goal, right? So we're just going to look at 12 weeks at a time. And I'll walk you through that process as we talk about our business plan for 2025. Okay. The 12 week year is guided by three principles. Okay. Accountability or ownership is the first one. That's a willingness to own your actions and your results regardless of your circumstances, right? Accountabil accountability equals actions. So we're no longer going to be like, oh, because everybody has life that gets in the way. I promise you, everybody on this call, everybody who watches this on replay, everybody has life that gets in the way. Something comes up whether it's in your control, somebody else has control over your life, whatever that might be. So we're gonna take a ownership of our actions regardless of our circumstances. Okay, that's the first principle. The second principle is commitment. You're gonna be making a contract with yourself as a commitment, right? And that commitment is gonna be a promise, okay? Accountability projected in the future or ownership of your future results. That's going to result in integrity, self-esteem, and success. Okay, so your commitment is a promise to yourself. Okay, the um, third principle is the principle of greatest in the moment. Okay, that is the understanding that you're going to become great the instant you choose to do the things that are going to bring results. Okay, the results are the confirmation of greatness and greatness is a discipline. So, right. So if we start our 12 week year today and our goal is to close six transactions by the end of 12 weeks, closing the 12 transactions doesn't make us great. Getting up tomorrow and doing the things that need to be done in order to lead us to those closed transactions, that's what's going to make you great. So that's the principle of greatness in the moment. So those are the three principles behind the 12 week year. Any questions before I move on to outlining what the five disciplines look like? And we're gonna go deeper into these, just so you know, as we, after we've kind of put together our business plan, we'll talk about the accountability, the commitment, the greatness in the moment, what that looks like. All right. Here are our five disciplines. So in addition to those three principles, you're going to be driven by five disciplines. Okay. The first one is vision. That's the fuel to keep going. That's one of the things we're going to be talking about today. Your vision is going to drive you to execution. Um, and it's going to drive you to push on when you don't feel like it. So it's about putting together a powerful vision. Um, planning is the second discipline, right? Um, we're going to go into it planning with a less is more mentality, right? The more focused you are on your plan, the greater your chances are of success. So I think oftentimes when we put together a plan, especially when we're thinking about it, like over the entire year, we're like, here's all the things that I need to do, right? Even when I look at my to-do list, um, you know, if I'm getting ready to uh, go on vacation or trying to do something fun, a lot of times I'll put together a to-do list and I don't just focus on the things that have to get done in order for me to go on vacation. I like put everything on that list that I've ever thought about doing that could possibly need done, right? And then what happens is I feel so overwhelmed looking at that list 
that I end up doing very little of it because I've over committed, I've over planned on my to-do list or my actions that need to be done. And so we're going to go into this with a less is more mentality, right? So we're going to start talking when we start talking about planning of what are the things that have to get done, the key items in order for you to go on vacation, not everything else, not the, it would be nice if things, okay? So we're going to go into planning with less is more mentality. The fifth or third discipline is process control, right? Where that's what drives success in your tactics. It's the tools and events that align your daily actions with your goals. We use process control to ensure that we execute our tactics effectively. Okay, so we're going to talk more about process control. And then the fourth discipline is scorekeeping. Okay, we're not going to be afraid of scorekeeping. Um, it's that measurement that's going to ensure success, right? So it's the anchor to reality. Keeping score provides you with the feedback you need to stay on target, right? Unfortunately, um, most of us are not disciplined enough without scorekeeping in our life, without a regular check-in to make sure that we're maintaining and on track. So we'll go over more in depth about what scorekeeping or measurement looks like. And then the fifth one is time use. Being intentional with your time so that you're in control of your results. Our goal with the 12-week year and putting together our business plan is that we're going to have more focused, more intentional time working on our business when we're doing the things that need to be done. It's actually going to free up more time for our personal lives or the things that you want to be doing outside of business. So that's our goal by being intentional with time. So we'll dig into all five principles more in depth. This week, we're digging into vision. Okay. And in order to start, I, in fact, I should back up one. Does anybody have questions about the 12 week year, the um, three priorities or the five, five, sorry, three principles or the five disciplines before we move on to um, what vi vision versus values are? All right. Let's dive in to vision versus values, right? So um, before we can put together our business plan, we really need to spend time focusing on both our values and our vision, okay? Most business owners underestimate the power that understanding your values and defining your vision has in both their lives and in their business, so this week, what we're going to do is we're going to dive into how to uncover and define both your values and your vision. But first, we're going to do that by understanding what the difference is between the two, because they sound the same. They both start with V. I mean, how many words start with V, right? So your vision is what's going to get you up every day and keep you moving after rejection gets you or through all those mundane tasks. Okay, that vision is what's going to keep pushing you forward. Your values are your belief system, and that's that belief system that lies at the deepest level of your programming, right? It's your values that are going to determine um, your satisfaction with how you spend your time. So in order to define our vision, we must first identify our values. And if you're like Amy, I totally understand my values already. I know what those are. Well, I'm telling you, you probably don't unless you've worked and attended one of my classes before somebody else that's done a deep dive into values. So it was only about three or four years ago that I realized the importance of values and what they played in my business, mainly because again, I didn't really understand what values really were. So when I first thought of values, when somebody's like, oh, we're going to talk about our value, I was, I was thinking, well, it's like honesty and integrity, right? Of course, those play a role in our business and our lives. And we all know what those are and you know what we want to do. But the real values are so much deeper than what my understanding was. And when I spent time fully uncovering my values, it allowed me to move my actions into alignment with those values, which caused me to have a greater sense of fulfillment in what I was doing in my business, a greater sense of uh, fulfillment in what I was doing in my life, and a bigger drive in my business. In fact, the year that I moved my values in alignment with my business plan, I actually worked less and produced more 
because I was more consistent in my time and I enjoyed what I was doing so much more because it was in alignment. I wasn't fighting against my inner being. So there's seven areas where you should spend time uncovering your values. They are finances, relationships, personal life, health, business, job, and spirituality. Okay. And even if you're like, well, Amy, I don't believe in God. You still have spirituality in there. There's still like your inner being. Okay. So that's where you need to spend time uncovering your values. Um, the exercise of uncovering your values is best to do with a partner as it makes it easier when you have someone asking you the questions and when you have to state keywords or phrases out loud, it helps you to hear them, help somebody to ask questions about them. Um, so for each area, I recommend again, partnering up with somebody and for each area, you're going to say, what is important to you about that? Okay. So you'd be like, for example, today we're using finances. So what's important to you about finances? And some quiet processing time, if you're working with your partner and they don't answer right away, that's okay. We don't have to rephrase the question. We don't need to ask it again. We don't need to like push them for an answer. I know some people get really uncomfortable in their silence, but let them process through that question. What's important to you about finances, right? So it might be finances, what's important to you about business, right? What's important to you about your personal life? We're going to go through each and every one with our partners. And you're going to continue that until you have four to five key words or phrases, right? So somebody's like, hey, Amy, what's important to you about finances? I'm going to be like, oh, well, um, finances allow me to pay my bills. So I'm going to write that down. Um, what, why else are finances important to you, right? It's not like a one word answer or one phrase answer. You'd be like, well, finances are important to me because they provide stability. Okay. Finances are important to me because gosh, when I have the money that I need, when I, my finances are or, in order, it allows me to have fun and do the things that I enjoy doing. So we're going to write that down, right? So you're going to keep like writing those things down and until you come out of phrases. And we're looking for at least four to five keywords or phrases. Somebody may come up with eight or nine or 10 items. Like here's what's important to me. Oftentimes when we go back and we start looking at those things, um, you're going to, some of the things are going to start repeating, right? So if I'm like, well, finances bring stability and I already said finances um, allow me to pay my bills, right? I might look into that and be like, well, being able to pay my bills is stability. Like those are really the same thing. That was just kind of the surface answer, but it's deeper than that. It's really stability versus paying bills, right? So we're going to start kind of seeing where we're repeating some things. It with, And it's probably different words. We're probably not repeating the same words. It's probably using different words that kind of mean the same thing, okay? So we're going to keep digging until there's just nothing else there. And we may want to dig deeper, Okay. And it's okay to ask if somebody's like, oh, well, um, gosh, uh, finances to me bring freedom. And you're like, okay, what's important to you about finances and freedom, right? So it's okay to like pick their brain a little bit and ask them to dive deeper to see if that really is the root or if there's something else beyond that, okay? Um, in addition to that, it's natural for our minds to go negative, Okay, because oftentimes we want to move away from what hurts us. So oftentimes, especially when it comes to our values, because they are deeply ingrained at like the basis of our being, a lot of those things were developed when we were children. Okay, and a lot of times um, it's something that we're trying to move away from, right? So um, if somebody says, you know, what's important to you about finances and you're going to be like, well, gosh, I just don't want to lack, I, I want, I don't want to lack finances. It's important for me to not be lacking when it comes to finances. Right. And that's kind of a negative side of things, not lacking. That's not something that I'm like, Ooh, let me get up tomorrow and move towards like not lacking. No, that doesn't, that that's probably not going to drive me forward, but if we look at, okay, well, what's the opposite of not lacking or what's the positive side of not lacking? Well, that would be like an abundance, right? So um, so we always want to kind of spin it to the positive versus the negative. Does that make sense to everybody? Anybody? Thumbs up? Okay. All right. So keep it 
positive. Okay. Um, so for me, when I look at, uh, thank you, Leticia, for your interaction. When I look at like what's important to me about finances, my top words or my top keywords or phrases are freedom, security. It's a vehicle to live dreams, money working for me and stability. Okay, so those are the five keywords or phrases. If you have more than four or five keywords or phrases, what we want to do next is we're gonna put them in order of importance. Okay, so what is the most important thing for you? And then what's the second most? And it doesn't matter what your partner says, they're gonna try to not put any impact or input into the order or anything. Um, you can ask questions if you feel like they're the same thing, ask them to define the word for you, which we're gonna do next. But you could say, hey, like these two things, they kind of sound similar. Can you define what that means to you so that you make sure it's not the same thing? But we're gonna put them in order of importance. So for my keys, that was vehicle to live dreams is the most important and then freedom then security, and then my money working for me and stability. Okay. So if, if money is not the vehicle to live my dreams, really, truly the, it, nothing else matters. So that's kind of when we look at it as important. It's like, what's the one thing that if you couldn't have anything else out of here, what's that one thing that does it for you? And then we go, okay, well, what's the next thing? If you've got six, seven, eight, nine words, we want to cap it at four to five. So we're going to put them all in order. Then we're going to draw a line under number five. And we're only going to keep the top five words. Okay. Any questions about that? Putting them in order. So first we're going to define our values. And you want to do one area at a time. So we're just going to work through finances first. Then we're just going to work through business and then job and then you know personal life and spirituality and relationships, right? So we're just going to take one at a time and work through it all the way. I would recommend that you don't bite off more than like one or two per day because it gets um, mentally exhausting because you're really digging deep into who you are and your being. So I would recommend one or two a day. There's seven to get through. It's going to take you like a whole week if you did it daily or a couple of weeks if you did it um, just a couple of times a week. Okay, so we're going to put them in order of importance, one to five, cut off anything below number five. If you only have four, that's fine too, but I'd recommend at least getting to number four. Okay, after we have them in order, then what we want to do is we want to define what those top five keywords or phrases mean to you. Okay, and again, this is what they mean to you, not somebody else. So there's no wrong or right answers. What it means to you may not be the same thing of what it means to your partner that's helping you with this or even somebody else. So, right, and we wanna be specific, okay? We need to know what success looks like in each area and with regards to each keyword or phrase. Okay, so for me, right, when I say um, finances are the vehicle to live my dreams, what I mean is, Every financial decision that I make should result in us moving closer to our goals in the future. Okay, if I'm making a financial decision that's not moving us closer to our goals, it's out of alignment with that, then it's not becoming the vehicle to live my dreams unless those goals have changed, right? So every time I make a financial decision, I need to put it in check with my values in that area. Freedom for me when it comes to finances means that I'm going to have the freedom from any debt, including mortgage, in turn, creating more freedom for how we choose to spend our money. That's what freedom looks like. So if I'm free of debt, if I'm paid off my mortgage, right? So that gives me more freedom to choose my money. That means I'm winning with regards to that. Security for me means that I'm going to have 12 months of expenses in the bank at all times to fund both personal and business expenses. Let me set up for 12 months. That's what security looks like. Okay. Money working for me means that we'll be using our finances to create passive income and wealth. Money working for me. It should be bringing more in, right? Return. And finally, stability means that we will create passive income that is dependable and reliable on a monthly basis that covers our monthly expenses. Okay, that's what stability looks like. It no longer depends on, do I have a transaction closing this month or not? I've got enough passive income coming in on the side. That's what stability looks like, okay? So do you see that how by defining 
the terms that came to my mind and that were important to me come to life when we put that definition with them, right? It becomes easy for me to know whether I'm in alignment with that value or not. Okay, does everybody see that? Thank you, Zoom user, for your participation. Okay, it's really important that during this part, you make sure to focus again on that positive and not the negative. So when we create what it looks like, we want to make sure that it's the positive spin. What do we want to happen? Not do we, what do we not want to happen? Okay. So, um, you know, like for security, like a lot of people um, may, the negative spin on that, right, is that we, um, you may not, okay, let me try this again. For security, the negative side of it may be that, gosh, I just never want to be afraid of not having enough money. So see how we're operating out of fear with that statement versus we're operating out of power with positive of instead of I don't want to operate, um, I don't want to worry about not having enough money. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to have 12 months of expenses in the bank at all times to fund, fund both personal and business expenses. So it's basically the same thing, but I'm saying, hey, this is what we're going to do, not this is what I'm afraid of. Okay. But wait, there, we aren't done. So after we take time to define each item, each word or key phrase that we came up with, then what we want to do is we want to take those definitions and create a single phrase so that we can look back at that phrase on daily to make choices and decisions that stay in line with our values, okay? So for instance, we've already talked about my keywords or phrases. I've talked about what I defined those as. So... Um, for me, my statement with regards to my financial values is we will be in a or moving towards a position where we have the financial portfolio in place, creating dependable passive income on a monthly basis that allows us to make choices in abundance and not the lack. We will be able to do the activities that we desire, whether it means trips, activities, or just living a generous lifestyle. Okay, so for me, that's my financial value statement. So I've taken kind of all those and summarized it into one paragraph or one statement uh, that I can look at on a daily basis and say, hey, is this decision helping me to achieve that value or helping me to stay in alignment with that value? Okay, and then again, we're going to repeat this process, coming up with the keywords, putting them in the right order defining that order, and then making a summary statement for each of those seven areas. Any questions about uncovering your values? Okay, again, remember how I told you like three or four years ago is when I uncovered the importance of values in our um, business planning that I'd never made that connection before, mainly because I didn't understand what values were. And then I made that connection. One of the things that comes through um, my values on just about every item outside of finances, because in general, finances just aren't fun. Although money working for you and vehicle to live dreams is fun, but is the word fun. So that's one of my values. And I realized that in my busyness of life, Prior to uncovering that revelation, I had eliminated, I hadn't eliminated, but I wasn't focused on the fun of things. I wasn't focused on having fun in my business. I wasn't focused on doing fun things outside of business. And I realized that my value was not in line with my business plan. It wasn't in line with my daily actions. And therefore, because ingrained deeply in me is this ability or this desire rather to have fun because I was missing that portion. I was dreading showing up to work. I was not as effective and efficient in the things that I was doing because none of it was fun. And when I intentionally introduced fun back into my business, back into my life, I made choices. Um, if you follow me on social media or have any in-depth conversation whatsoever, you'll find that I ride horses two to three times a week because to me, that's fun. It's almost like therapy to me. And sometimes even though I've got a pile of stuff on my desk to take care of and do, I know that if I don't get out and have fun and ride horses, 
on the day that I had planned to ride horses or, you know, if something came up on another day that that pile of work is going to take me forever to get through. And if I go spend three or four hours on horseback and then come back, I can knock that out in like half a day. And otherwise it would take me a couple of days because now I'm re-energized and I realized that, Hey, I had my fun. Now I need to sit down, knock out work. So make sure that your business and your life is in alignment with those values and whatever those might be. Okay. All right. Moving on to vision. So once we have our values and once we have a clear understanding of what our values are in each of those areas, then we can move forward with crafting our vision. So step one, values. Step two, vision. Okay. So remember those values are our deepest beliefs at the core of our being. But that vision is what's going to make it tangible and get us out of bed in the morning when things aren't going our way, okay? When you look at your vision and you review it, it should evoke an emotional response and it should make you want to move into action, okay? Our vision statement is going to be a statement of what we're working towards, okay? So let's get started on creating our vision, Okay, a great life starts with a great vision. So we want to start with um, where are we going to find ourselves in 10, 15, maybe even 20 years in the future. Okay, let your imagination soar. You know, number one, you might want to be like, well, gosh, in 15 years, um, how old will you be? Let's start there. What do you hope will happen? Do you have kids now and you hope in 15 years you're going to have grandkids? Like what does, what do you envision that future looking like, right? There's nothing too impractical or audacious to consider. And you want to dream about things that truly excite you. Like if I look 10 to 15 years in the future, I'm like, man, I would like to not have to work. I want to only work because I choose to and not because I have to. In fact, if I could load up my horse trailer Number one, if I could buy a horse trailer with living quarters in it, like a trailer, it's kind of like a travel trailer that you can put horses in, right? Don't worry, they're separate in case you didn't know that. But if I could load up my horses into a travel trailer and spend a month or two months traveling the United States, going from national park to national park or riding through the different states and getting to see and, and experience what each state has to offer, that would be so amazing. So in 10 or 15 years, that's what I would like to be doing. I would like to have the ability to be able to do that, right? When you start crafting your vision for 10 to 20 years out, it's probably gonna be more about personal aspirations than business, but it can be a balance of both. Um, but really hear me on this. It's probably not gonna be real estate related. It doesn't have to be, it probably won't be. Now that being said, you may be like, man, I am 20 years old and in 15 years, I'm going to be 35 and I want to be one of the top agents in Northern California, right? So that might be part of your 10 or 15 year vision for your life. That's totally okay. If that's what you have in there, it might be real estate related, but it, for the most people, it doesn't have to be and it probably won't be, okay? Um, as we're doing this, we're not worried about the how we're going to get there. We're just focused on the what if. Okay, what if, what do we want to do? Um, and when we talk about vision, we aren't necessarily talking about our goals either, especially when we're talking 10 or 15 years out. We want it to be bigger than tangible goals. We'll break those down into shorter term goals in the future, but we want our vision to just be like, this is what life could be like. Okay, so we're going to take it and break it down into steps. Okay, step one is we have to define what that kind of looks like or at least have a jumping point for that. So I would recommend your first step is to make three lists. Okay, the have list or what would you like to have in life? And this might be both material and non-material. So maybe you don't own a home and maybe in 10 years or maybe you want your dream home and this is what our dream home might look like. Or I want to have um, a happy marriage or I want to, I've always dreamed of having a dog rescue and that's what I'd like to have in life, right? So material and non-material. The next list that you're gonna put together is the do list or what would you like to do in life, right? So I touched on this a little bit. I would like to travel the United States riding horses wherever I see fit. I think that would be fun. For some people that might sound miserable, but I think it sounds fun. Okay, so the do list, what do you want to do? I want to be able to, to, babysit my grandkids 
whenever they need help or whenever I choose to, right? I don't want it to be like, oh, I can't help you today because I have to work, okay? I don't want to have to be that grandma. So my do list might be like, hey, I want to watch my grandkids. I want to spend three weeks a year with just my grandkids without my kids around, right? The B list, what do you want to be in life, right? Do you want to be a grandma? Do you want to be the top agent in Northern California? Do you want to be a retired homesteader living off the land? Do you want to be a hermit someplace? What do you want to be in life? And remember, we're not going to hold back. Sky is the limit. This is where we take time to dream. And this doesn't have to be, oh, I spent 15 minutes on it. This might be like, hey, I'm going to think about this, talk about it. Maybe if you have a significant other, you may want to be like, hey, let's talk about this together. Like, where do we want to be in 10 or 15 years? And maybe we talk about it before bedtime so that our brain can continue to process that overnight and think about it. And then we get back up in the morning and then write down more ideas. So this might take like a full 24 to 48 hours for your brain to process and think and really dream big. Okay. Some additional prompts that may help you get to the basis of your long-term vision are um, maybe why do you want to do all of this, right? Why do you want to make money at real estate? Why do you want to be a successful realtor? What do you want to accomplish? Again, not just in business, but it might be in life as well. What do we want to accomplish or gain? Um, if you're on your deathbed, what would you want your legacy to be, right? What do you want people to say about you? Why will people remember you? And another way to think about it is maybe like, what do you value most? Okay, so just some extra prompts to help you get to what your vision should be. And you're just going to jot all these things down. Just jot down your ideas, your thoughts, whatever pops to your mind. We're just going to write them down. Okay, so your have, do, be list. Additional prompts. Um, and we want to think big. Okay. And then when we think we're thinking bigger, we want to think even bigger. So um, if you come up with answers like, well, gosh, in 10 or 15 years, I just want to be able to pay my bills. Right. Um, or I want to be successful or I want to maybe have people like I got into real estate so that people would have a better bit or experience than I did. Or I want to just set my own schedule. Those things are good, but they're not big enough. Those are not going to drive you out of bed day after day. So if I'm laying in bed being like, man, yesterday was rough. I had three deals fall out of contract and my buyer cheated on me with another agent because I didn't sign an exclusive uh, buyer agency agreement. So they decided to use this other agent to write the offer on the house that agent showed them. Gosh, it was rough being like, oh, but if I get out of bed today, I get to set my own schedule. That's probably not going to invoke that emotion and like get me out of bed. I'd be like, forget the schedule. I don't even care at this point. Like I'm just going to stay in bed. Today is that day, right? So it's not going to drive us forward. Um, so we want to make sure that we're thinking big and visionary. Okay. So once we have all of our lists, our be, do, have list, we've answered the other prompts, we've thought about other things. You know, we Sometimes what happens is we get on these rabbit trails, right? We think about something on the B list and then that leads to, ooh, but what about this? And, oh, that would be so cool to be able to do this. And um, like, I want to backpack across, the like who knows where it will lead to, right? But we're just going to jot all those things down. Once we have those, we're going to take what's on that list and anything else that we came to mind. And we want to write out a picture of what our future looks like. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. All right. When we go to craft our vision, we may want to dig deeper to reach the core value of our why. So like in my vision, it's not going to be, uh, I want to travel the world riding horses or travel the United States riding horses because that's not big enough. But why do I want to do that, right? Why do I want to have that kind of lifestyle or why do I want to spend time with my grandkids? So we want to dig deeper to that why and relate it back to basically our core values. So our vision and our core values should be in alignment with each other. So we're going to continue to ask, why do I want to do that until it gets into that core value? So if you're like, man, I'm doing real estate because I want to be able to provide for the future. Well, why do you want to provide for the future? Well, 
we always lived on basically next to nothing growing up. And that's not the lifestyle I want to provide my kids. Okay. Well, why is that not the lifestyle that you want to provide their kids, your kids? Right. So we're going to like keep digging deeper to get it to that core value of the why. Okay. So, um, when I look at my vision, right. After looking at my values, making my be have do list and working through the prompts, here's what I came up with. I came up with to live a happy life of fun, freedom, and abundance. Okay. But the problem there with that phrase, there's like truly nothing wrong with it. Like that's all good things. But the problem is that it's not specific enough. So we don't want it to be um, too small, but we also don't want it to be too broad where it doesn't really invoke that emotion. Okay. It's just an empty statement. If I had that next to my bed and I'd had a rough day the morning before or the day before, and I woke up and be like, oh, I need to get up and go to work because I need to live a life of a happy life of fun, freedom and abundance. I'd be like, well, yesterday wasn't fun. I'm definitely not feeling free. And who cares about abundance right now? Right. Like that would be my mindset and it would not drag me out of bed. So um, it, I would say it's an empty vision statement. And that's OK, because most companies, if you look at their vision statements, I would say most companies have what I would call an empty vision statement. They don't evoke an emotion. They don't drive you forward. They're there. That's the vision of where the company wants to go, but it doesn't It doesn't really have that driving factor. So we want to take it further. So if I ask myself, why do I want to live a happy life? Why do I want to have fun, right? Why do I want freedom? Why do I want abundance? So I need to just take time to kind of stew with that and get to that core value of why of my why. So it becomes more specific and emotional. So then when I did that step, here's what my vision became. So remember we started with to live a happy life of fun, freedom, and abundance. And it became, I believe there is more to life than working day in and day out. I believe that God puts us here to make a difference in the lives of those we interact with. And I want to be able to have the freedom to have fun and out of my abundance, bless those that I come in contact with. Right? So when I'm having a rough day, I got this next to my bed. I look at it in the morning when I'm really not wanting to drag myself out of bed or I put it next to the mirror because as I'm brushing my teeth and thinking, gosh, I'm even going to go into the office today. I'm reading that and going, yes, that's why I need to show up to the office today because that's where I want to be. And the only thing that's going to get me there is to continue to show up. Okay, does everybody see how I got from live a happy life of fun, freedom and abundance to my final vision statement for my life of 10, 15, 20 years out. Everybody tracking with me or did I lose you? Okay, I'm gonna assume I lost everybody since I see no thumbs up and no comments in the chat box. So if you have questions, make sure to ask them. Now's your time. All right, Garrison's still here, fabulous. All right, since Garrison's with us, we're gonna continue moving on. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna craft first. So now that we have um, our vision of where we want our life 10, 15, 20 years out, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna hone that in with step three to three year visions, okay? These are gonna be more tangible and these are gonna be more goal oriented than our big vision statement. Okay, we're gonna do both a personal and a professional vision statement for our life. So if we start with the personal vision, you wanna start by writing down your age that you're gonna be in three years, okay? And if your birthday is like at the beginning of the year, like mine is, you may wanna just kind of round up because three years is really only like two years and a couple months, okay? So you can decide where you wanna be on that. But what do you want your personal life to be like in three years? And things that you may wanna consider are relationships, family, health, spiritual, social, financial, intellectual, emotional, and lifestyle, okay? So if I write down my age in three years, I'll be 47. No, that's really getting close to 50, guys. I still feel like I'm like 27, so that's where I pretend to live. But anyways, so where do I need to be in my life in three years that will help move me forward towards my vision in 10 to 20 years, right? That vision that I created, where do I need to be in three years in order to be able to achieve that, right? 
So here's what my, I want my life to look like in three years. In three years, I want to be in a position where half of our income is covered by passive income. Okay. Remember, part of my values is my money needs to be working for me. Part of my vision is that, gosh, I want to be able to give abundantly and have money coming in more than what I need. So in order to do that, hey, in three years, I need like half my income being covered by passive income. We will be in a position where we're able to live off grid and to be able to produce more than we need on our homestead so that I can share our abundance with those around us. We will be in a position to be able to take at least a two week long vac or two week long vacations anywhere in the world. And I will be able to ride at least three days per week. So see my three year vision of where I wanna be in three years is way more tangible than my 10 to 20 year vision. Okay, my 10 to 20 year vision is more of just like, here's what I, the big picture of life, here's what I want it to feel like. Whereas my three year, year vision is more of a tangibility, what does success look like? Okay, so that's my personal vision. That's step three. Step four is we're gonna turn that into a three year year professional vision, right? Your career business vision should also align with your life vision. And um, right, because everything that we do should support that life vision. It should all support our values. So some things to consider when coming up with your professional three-year vision would be what difference do you want to make? How much time off do you want to have? What position or role do you want to be in? Are you going to be leading others? What will your team look like? In what areas do you excel in? In where will you feel the most fulfilled? And what will your income be, right? Will you have multiple locations? What's your target market? What's your value offer? How many clients will you have? What's your service model? How will you market yourself, right? So my professional vision, so we just went over my personal one, my professional um, vision may include something like the following. To be established as a real estate coach leading new agents to success during their first 90 days in the business and helping established agents grow both personally and professionally to have the life and business they envisioned. I will have at least 10 weekly coaching clients and create and be running at least three coaching modules with at least 100 agents participating. I will also be certified as a car forms trainer, working no more than three days per week and only 48 weeks per year. Okay. There's where I want to be in three years. It's specific. It's measurable. That's my vision for where I want to be. But I also know what success looks like and whether I've reached it or not. Okay. So values, right? We're going to define our keywords or phrases for each of the seven areas. We're going to put them in order. We're going to cap it at five. We're going to define what those items look like, and then we're going to write a value statement for each area. Once we have those completed for all seven areas, then we're going to move on to crafting our vision. We're going to start with our 10 to 20 year vision of where we want life to be in 10 to 20 years, something that's going to evoke emotion, that's going to get us out of bed in the morning and keep us going. Then we're going to narrow that down to three years. And in three years, it should be working towards our 10 to 20 year vision, it should be incorporating in our values as well. And we're going to set a three year vision slash goals for both our personal and our professional life. All right. Fabulous. If you want to take it a step further, you can narrow it down to what does that mean for the next year? Where do I need to be over this next year? And you can put a one-year goal together there as well. Again, as we narrow it down, it's going to become more and more specific so that we know what success looks like when we hit the end. Okay, once we have our vision done for our 10 to 20 years and our three years, your one year if you want to do it, then what we need to do is we need to own it, okay? The first thing that you want to do to own it is we need to share it with others. When you share your vision, you become more committed to it and you often feel more responsible to act. So that may be, I'm going to share it with my significant other. I'm going to share it with accountability partners at the office. I'm going to share it with my mentor, 
right? I'm going to share it on social media. Here's what I'm working towards. Who wants to help me meet that goal? Whatever that is to you, but share it with some people that are going to help ask you how it's going. Okay. The next thing you want to do, action step number two, is we want to keep it top of mind. So we don't want to create our vision and never look at it again. So you're going to create that vision and we're going to put it as the wallpaper on our computer, the background on your phone, put it up in your office, the car on the bathroom mirror, put it on the refrigerator, right? Um, maybe even create a vision board to make it more fun. And if your like whole body just cringed like mine does, every time I hear vision board, I'm telling you it is worthwhile and it works. No, you don't have to have a stack of magazines and cut things out of magazines and glue it to poster board. Okay, technology has changed. If that's your jam, you like scrapbooking, you like that, please do it. Get together a whole group of people. Everybody bring magazines together. Create your vision board that way. I personally am like, there's few things that I am slow to adapt with technology, but my vision board on technology was one thing that I did. I opened up Canva, created a page, started pulling clip art in for the things that I wanted to accomplish over the next three years, what that looked like, things I wanted to do, go be right. In fact, the first year that I did my vision board, um, I that was like six houses ago. So I can't even tell you how far... Uh, ago that was it was a long time ago but we didn't have a dishwasher at the time so on my vision board I found a clip art of a dishwasher and that went on my vision board I took that vision board um I don't know if Costco still does it I don't think they do I think they eliminated their printing department but I actually because I created it in Canva Canva's got their own thing now so they can print it and mail it to you I printed it and mailed it on a to me on a poster board so I didn't just stay on my computer but the cool thing was about Canva was I could save it as a PNG file or a JPEG. I saved it as my desktop. I put it on my phone. So those things, the vacations that I wanted to do, the things that I wanted for the house, the goals that I had for my life, maybe you're like, gosh, by the end of 2025, I wanna be the top agent in our office because my goal is to take over Northern California. So I'm gonna start with the office. So maybe it's got like number one, really T1 group Fox agent, right? on Or whatever it is, right? Whatever that would be. I put it on my vision board. You guys, like 95% of the things on my vision board came to pass because they stayed top of mind. And I knew that when I was dwindling with my hope and my motivation to get up and function in the morning or to go to the office and get things done, that I could just focus on that and be like, this is why I'm doing it. This is what I'm working towards. So keep those visions front of mind. Could be a vision board could just be a written statement. You might want to do like a nice frame and put your vision in there so it just stays, it looks nice. It's part of your artwork on your office walls. Again, we may want to put it on the fridge. We may want to put it on the bathroom mirror, like places that you're going to see it on a regular time. So we want to keep it top of mind. Um, action step number three is that we want to take the opportunity to make progress on our vision on a daily basis basis. So connect your daily activities with your vision. The plan that we're going to develop for our 12-week plan needs to be in alignment with our vision. Otherwise, we're doing the wrong steps and we're working towards the wrong thing. So that'll come more into play next week when we start diving into goals and tactics. Okay. Um, action step number four is be intentional. At the end of each day, take a couple of moments to reflect on the progress that you made. Did you move closer to your vision? Or did you fill your days with activities that were not related, right? If you spent time on tasks that weren't related, this is a good time to set our course for the next day. You get another chance to be intentional with moving closer to your vision and making it a reality. So at the end of each day, we want to take time to reflect. I mean, if we really took time at the end of each day, we're getting ready to close down our office, we're closing up books, cleaning up our desk in preparation for the next day, cleaning up our workspace, getting ready to close our computer. And we look at that statement and go, did what I do move me closer to this or keep me further away, right? How intentional would we be with our actions and what we're doing if we took time to reflect on it each and every day? So once we have our values and our vision, we want to make sure we share our vision with others. We might want to make sure we keep it top of mind. We want to connect those daily activities with our vision and we want to be intentional with our reflection and in setting up our future steps to move us closer to that vision. Next week, 
we're going to dive into, look at this. I finished right on time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Next week, um, we're going to cover our 12 week goals and then weekly tactics, what those look like, how we define those and what that looks like. Does anybody have any questions, thoughts, ahas before we end today's lesson? I do have the chat box up. You can unmute yourself and just blurt it out. What are your key takeaways from today? Hey, Amy, good morning. Good How morning. are you? I'm good. I think, I think it just, it makes it so easy to see like uh, on the long term and the short term and just have like an idea of what you want to do and what you like more realistic goals. I love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> good. I'm glad you liked it. Um, if you want, well, I'll take um, the either the slideshows or I'll make a little workbook too um, later today and I'll throw it in the foxhole group. So look for a PDF document. So if you guys want to work through this, you'll have kind of the steps to work through it um, in a PDF format that you can print up. Anna says she loves the idea of the vision board. Thank you. I was not sold on the vision board until I actually did it. And then it really does keep it top of mind, keeps those things in the forefront. It does make it easier to push on. So I am now a fan of the vision board. In fact, um, for those for the the idea of the vision board, um, you know, I moved to North Idaho a couple of years ago, and as we were working towards our dream of North Idaho, um, we actually bought property and with the intention of building one day. And I actually had signs made on Etsy. There's like a wood sign. I don't think it's in my office. I think it's in the house now that had the coordinates of our property. And then I also had one that said, um, like, live the dream. And it had a little California map and an Idaho map. And then um, I had one other thing. Oh, that with the dream is real. And so I um, kept those. So it wasn't like an actual vision board of like a picture of the property or anything. But it was just those daily reminders around our house of this is what we're working towards. And so it, it doesn't have to be like clip art pictures either. Like you can think outside the box to keep you focused. Who is Zoom user? Zoom user, identify yourself. You always show up as Zoom user, but I'd like to know who you are. Um, and I will get that PDF out. I'll work on it as soon as I'm done here so that I can um, kick it out to that Foxhole group later today. Fabulous. Any other ahas? All right. Um, we will be back tomorrow. Um, I think we're talking about working with buyers tomorrow. Could be wrong. Um, Abby will correct me if I am. Otherwise, just show up tomorrow at 10 and we'll go over the rev up series. And then um, next week, we'll be back. I think it's next week. I could be wrong because it could be the office meeting next week. Let's look at that. I feel like the office meeting is next week. Office meeting yeah, is next I think week. It's, so we, it's, yeah. Yep. So you've got two weeks. So th think of the next week. We're going to work on our values. The week after that, you're going to define your vision. That'll set you up for success going into goals and tactics in two weeks. Working with buyers tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., same link. All right, fabulous. Thank you all. I will see you later. Thanks, Amy. Absolutely. Have a great day.